At our core, humans are afraid of death. Our bodies are incredibly fragile and complex electrochemical machines that could fail at any moment, and we are all too aware of it. In this course, our syllabus functions as a catalog of the way humans try to deal with the fear of death. The fitting conclusion to this saga, therefore, is a work that seriously considers what happens when that fear is gone. 17776 is a multimedia online literary work created by sports journalist John Boyce of SB Nation. The main characters are Pioneer 9, an old space probe, who is also called 9, their sister Pioneer 10, a slightly less old space probe, also known as 10, and Juice, or the Jupiter Icy Moons Explorer, a space probe set to launch in 2022. It takes place in the year 17776, where these anthropomorphic robots watch from deep space as humans have learned how to live forever and solve problems ranging from poverty to hunger. So, with all of the evils of modern life gone and infinite time on their hands, what do humans do? They play football. Let me be clear, you want to read this. It's going to be pretty easy to read, it's not super long, only takes maybe two hours to get through, and it's written in contemporary American English, None of this for our penitents deserves a glimpse only, our toil respite only, bullshit. It's also multimedia, as I have said, it contains GIFs and videos that not only provide a new perspective on the world of 17776, they are also cool as hell. To understand why, let's look at what makes the story cool, it's mind-blowingly creative game design. An example of this is Boise's version of 500. In real life, 500 is played with one person who throws a football in a random direction while yelling out a point value. Whoever catches the football gets those points, and you get to throw the football if you reach 500 points. The principle is the same here. One person is on top of Denali with a big ass cannon. They launch the football anywhere in the country, announce a point value, and tens of thousands of people try to recover it. One person might be on Denali for hundreds of years. Meanwhile, the trio of, might I remind you, sentient space robots are able to track the ball in real time because, well, they are space robots. That is objectively awesome, but it's only one game out of the dozen or so throughout the work. Boys is also incredibly funny. There's one portion where Ten and Juice talk about how they would track every single garden hoe in the world and watch for people who stepped on it and hit themselves in the face. Juice explains that the humans didn't know they were sentient yet, so he would hack into cell towers and text people every single time. It happened. Of course, I know you're not just here to have a good time. So, let's talk about the philosophy and literary analysis. I told you earlier that this syllabus catalogs the ways we cope with death, so let's substantiate that claim. Dante's Inferno is one obvious example, it tells you what happens after death if you sin, with the implication that if you're a good Christian you won't have to deal with that. The Bible is more explicit with this, it's the ultimate how to guide for getting into heaven. Some people aren't convinced by religion, however. Others want to remain immortal in the minds of others. This is what motivates Don Quixote and Mr. Ramsey to perform their considerable feats of brilliance. Othello is so motivated by this that in his last words, he says, When you shall these unlucky deeds relate, speak of me as I am, nothing extenuate, nor set down aught in malice. Even Lily Briscoe takes some comfort in the fact that her paintings will be around forever. To the Lighthouse is interesting here because it explicitly juxtaposes these coping mechanisms against the threat of mortality. But what happens when these coping mechanisms are gone? What happens when we are condemned to live? Through the trio's eyes, we see how the behavior of humans changes when they have infinite time on their hands. Some of them seem to have stopped caring about anything, as shown in Chapter 18 when Lucretia Evans orders lunch. Restaurants give out money for free, which wouldn't happen unless they just didn't care about money. In Chapter 7, Ten says that having a job is a thing that people do if they feel like it. And of course, immortality drives people to play football because, as Ten says, they don't do anything, just like the space probes who have completed their mission. On the other hand, Evans cares too much. She talks about having objective syndrome, and needing to obsessively pursue a goal, in this case, winning cross country 500, in order to remain sane. Boys shows how we can have meaning in our lives independently of our own mortality, just without all the stress. Ultimately, Boys is able to create a vivid depiction of what a world without death looks like. Humans live without suffering, playing football all day and having fun for its own sake without caring about wasted time. This is what makes 17,776 so interesting as a literary work. 
He creates a world where humans have seemingly gone insane, doing nothing but wasting time and playing frivolous games. But in actual fact, they only seem insane to us because we are so wrapped up in our own finite lives. Boys' world in 17,776 is the world the characters and the rest of the syllabus wish they inhabited, and it's why 17,776 should be the concluding text to this semester.